and oh one yeah. and uh, this is the meeting of the silver wherever you are on the planet yeah this is the meeting of the silvercom computer and technology club on uh the yes. 19th of january 2021 and i'm ron brown and yes. is the uh we have 22 people at the club today and carol is going to give us some opening remarks Take it away, Carol. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. Well, there's not much news on this end. Ron, why am I delayed? I can hear myself talking. Uh, it's your, <laughs> it's probably your computer is probably slow. <laughs> <laughs> like me this morning. It's probably your internet. Just keep talking. Really? No. Oh. Probably your internet. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I really don't have much to report on. Ron's doing a great job as usual with tech for seniors. <clears throat> and it's it's good to see everyone. I really wish we were every, you know in person. <laughs> I had to go for to the eye doctor and I said, oh, I can tell you that I'm getting older and there's something wrong with my glasses. The, the Zoom meetings, I can't see anybody anymore. <laughs> Unless I'm about three inches from the screen. Everybody's a blur. Really? <laughs> but you need to, you need so, to broadcast it on. Yeah. He says, well, I could, I could do something better for your bifocals. I said, no. But uh, so I'm going to send it right over to Ron and Dewey. All right. So Ron, you've got the floor as usual. Okay. Uh, let me just mute. I'm going to mute everybody and you can unmute yourself. Just a minute, I'm going to mute you. So if you uh, want to, uh, if you want to talk, you can just unmute yourself. But I'm just going to, just going to mute everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome Mike Smith here. Mike, do you want to wave for us? Mike is our, uh, Mike is our representative with APCUG for uh, the, um, uh, for our area. And thank you, Mike, for coming to the meeting. That's great to see you here and support us. And uh, that's uh, great. Um, you will, I want everyone to pay attention in the next few newsletters. We haven't got the final meeting list out, but of course the APCUG conference will be on uh, February, let me just look here, February the 13th. So that's a Saturday and that will be our, uh, our conference. I'll be talking on printers and we'll have a slate of people. So it should be a good conference. So those of you who have attended it in the past, uh, please, please come. Those of you who haven't, it's just a Zoom meeting. It's the same as our meeting here. It's just a Zoom link. You click on the link and away you go. But you do have to pre-register for it, which would, we will, which would be great. Um, so our topics today that I wanted to talk about, everybody uh, last week, uh, last meeting we had, um, really enjoyed the format where we chatted for around 20 minutes, sort of had a round table discussion, talked about different things. Uh, so I thought this week uh, we would talk about the internet. And I, I am gonna show a little video clip of a presentation I did. It's not the whole presentation, it's just the last part of the presentation called Navigating the Post-COVID Era. And it's talking about what internet options we're gonna have in 2021. <laughs> So I thought I'd play the uh, the video. It's about a 15 minute video, and then we can talk about um, talk about what what our feelings are about what we're going to be doing for the internet this year. Now, uh, then, huh, I changed the topic. We were we were talking. Um, I was answering an email before the show. On um, I got an email from someone who wanted to know how to digitize slides. Uh, 35 millimeter slides and so I was sending them some YouTube videos and I was watching some and they were pretty cool I found a real interesting one and then I was talking to Mike about it before the show and he had some great ideas and then I was talking to Bob and he had some great ideas so and then Dewey had some ideas and I thought 
you know, this would be a great topic for our for our program today. So, so we're going to do so. The second part of the show is we're going to talk about digitizing thirty five millimeter slides. I think I think we have all the experts right here. We can have a pretty good talk about it. So um, I'm going to uh, now I'm going to share my screen and then I'm going to play this uh, little bit of a video and I want you to just watch and then we'll we'll open the mics up and then we'll have a bit of chat about this. Okay, let me just uh, share my screen. <clears throat> And I'm just going to start this. We <clears> both <throat> just when we emerge thing when this pandemic I don't think we'll ever go back to the way it was. Google, Microsoft, and Apple all announced this week that people will be working from home in a home office permanently. The home office is a reality. We need to power this technology with a strong, reliable internet. The internet is going to be the key building block that allows the post-COVID era to emerge. Let's look at the options we'll have for a strong, reliable internet this following year. Let me give you an example of why this is so important in the post-COVID era. Securing a fast, reliable internet can make a big difference in your livelihood. This past summer, I read an article uh, about a teacher and her husband who lived in Nova Scotia. This is a big city in a province in Eastern Canada. They were looking at retiring and decided to retire about 40 miles north of Halifax in a cottage. This was a nice, it was a smaller house. It was in a, on a couple of acres of land and they thought this would be a perfect retirement and was only 40 miles from the big city. So this, uh, so they, this lady and her husband uh, both decided to um, a family home in Halifax and sort of move out into the rural area. Sort of the um, could start the retirement soon. She was a teacher, and I don't remember exactly what he did for a living, um, but it was something in technology in the city. So um, the problem with this piece of property was, is there was no internet. And the problem was it just barely got cell phone reception, not enough to use a hotspot. She was a teacher and along came COVID-19. She then, um, of course, was uh, isolating in her house. And she, uh, when the school started up again, she was required to teach, but she had to teach uh, online. This created a huge problem because she couldn't do it in her house. So she had to drive 20 miles to a library where she spent the day in the library doing her classroom work. Her husband, I don't remember the specifics, but lost his job because of the COVID-19. And he um, couldn't work from home because, again, they had no internet. So this really threw their lives in a difficult position because they had not secured a fast, reliable internet. So please, as we move forward in this post-COVID era, it is so important that you think about, no matter where you go, a fast, reliable internet. Now we're gonna look at um, five internet solutions for you from the slowest to the fastest. And we'll look at DSL, we're going to look at uh, Starlink, the new satellite system. We're going to talk about cable systems, fiber optic systems, and of course the new fixed base 5G. Digital subscriber line or DSL. This is what the phone companies used to use to provide internet to your homes through the telephone line. This is usually found in central area, in, um, in urban areas, particularly in downtown, 
uh, centers. It was often put in condominiums, large apartment office buildings, because it couldn't be very far from the transmitting site. It was able to provide services to a lot of people, but it it really didn't couldn't go very far. So they use this in very congested areas such as uh, uh, living living areas such as condominiums and apartments or office buildings. This is really problematic now because a lot of these lines are very old. And the maximum uh, DSL speed you'll get is around, um, could be up to 100 megabits download. The concern is that a lot of the buildings that have this in them, the speed is certainly not 100 megabits when you actually test it in the actual room. So you must be very, very careful if you plan on moving into an older building you certainly like it. They tell you that, oh yes, it's got fast DSL. What you need to do is actually go into the building and measure the DSL coming out of the, um, of the uh, connector because you may find it is extremely slow. And this could be a big problem if you moved into your brand new condo and you found that the internet was not reliable and you couldn't do it and didn't meet your needs. So please be careful of DSL. Let's look at Starlink. Starlink is a new technology that, of course, everyone is excited about. It looks as though it's going to be around $100 a month, and the download speeds are going to be around 100 megabits per second, maybe a little faster, maybe a little bit slower. I think Starlink is an excellent service that will be providing internet to people who can't already have internet. Will it be a solution for everybody? No, it won't be, but it will be a solution for those people who live in rural areas like this particular uh, uh, teacher I was telling you about that can't get internet. And internet, again, will be the cornerstone of your post-COVID era. I am very fortunate. I have um, fiber optic cable coming to my front door as well as the second company provides cable service. I subscribed to the cable service with Shaw Communication, and last week I upgraded my system to a gigabit connection. This gives me a thousand megabytes download and about 120 megabytes upload. We use this a software called Doxus 3.1, which is a software that runs the cable internet system, and this provides some limitations in the upload speed. So usually you can't match the upload and download speed is equal. However, recent changes have provided a significant increase in the upload speed, and I'm so pleased to have the fastest connection I've ever had in my life. It's a lot of fun. So in talking with the technician that installed it, uh, on Saturday, he was telling me that you have to remember that the backbone of cable systems is usually fiber optic. And he said that down the, the fiber optic lines are just down the street from me, and then they run the coax down to the houses. So cable systems are trying to compete with the faster speeds now. And in fact, the, um, the megabit or the gigabit connection was only $10 more a month than my existing service. So, uh, when you are in the post-COVID era now, it is so important that we try to secure and find a reliable, fast internet connection. So look again at your cable companies as they are starting to change and offer services of much faster speed. Now, a steady, fast, reliable internet is definitely a fiber optic cable. If you have the opportunity to be connected with fiber optic, this is a very, very good connection. Probably the, as a residential service, the maximum that we'll be getting on fiber optic is uh, two gigabytes. So this will still be uh, slower than the new 5G, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But it's an excellent service, and if you have the opportunity, fiber optic connection is the way to go. Now, in closing, I'd like to talk about 5G technology, which is the future of communication. It will provide the fastest and most reliable uh, form of communication as we move into the future. In the post-COVID era, this is going to be a cornerstone of our communication. Now, most of the wireless companies now offer uh, fixed-base 5G 
communication. And I would strongly encourage you to look in your community as this is rolled out across the United States and Canada, it should be available now in your community. Uh, the, the speeds at which you're going to be able to get the internet using this is around 300 megabits per second download. Fixed base 5G is where there's an aerial on your house. It then communicates to a 5G tower and then the line comes down and connects to a, uh, a modem and your router. Well, the initial speeds now are around 300 megabits per second. This is because the 5G development is really in its infancy and the speeds need to increase. But they have the potential of moving up into uh, around 5,000 megabit download. This is incredible speeds and that should be available in the next few years. We're already looking at 6G and moving on to the next generation uh, over the next few years. So that this will provide an incredibly fast, reliable internet service for your home and it should be available all throughout uh, the United States and Canada in, in the short term. So uh, you should look at this because the deals now uh, are incredibly cheap. This is very, very good value. Just go to your wireless provider and ask and look at the pricing on this. This was going to be a, a big, big step in the digital world. It's the latest, greatest technology. It's so fast, it's easy, it's like lightning. 5G Home has been almost revolutionary from my previous provider. The installation was probably one of the easiest installations I've ever had. The speeds are exponentially quicker than what I've had prior with other services. Easy, and it's painless. The streaming and downloading is almost faster than my computer can write to my hard disk. It's been perfect. I love it. Now I'm Verizon 5G Home person. Well, COVID-19 has certainly changed our lives. Will things go back the way they were? I don't think so. You've already seen big changes in the way we communicate with each other, the way we do shopping, the way we buy our groceries. Some things will go back to the way they were, but many things will remain changed. I've tried to show you some of the new technologies that will be coming this year. I'm super excited about them. I guess one of the messages I want to leave with you is a change of attitude. I think that we need to secure a fast, reliable internet because that will be the key to staying connected with our loved ones and doing the things that will be coming in the future. This means budgeting. The internet is going to need a household budget, such as your water services, your garbage services, and the other services that you have with your house. You need to budget that in as a factor and then secure a fast, reliable service. Also, the thing about COVID-19 that broke my heart was certainly seeing the isolation of our seniors. There's no need for that. The communication technology that we have today can easily provide um, good communication with our loved ones. So I implore you to go out and talk to people about this and help change the attitude so this doesn't have to happen again. It's Ron Brown. I hope you've enjoyed um, watching the video as much as I had so much fun making it. Stay safe and be sure and wear your mask. All right. Um, so that was, um, so yeah, Greg, go ahead. <clears throat> I just got an email from Elon Musk, Starlink, and uh, they sent me the email saying that I could subscribe. I need to pay $559 for the installation kit. And then I have to get somebody to actually tune it in to the satellites. And it's a uh, uh, hundred plus plus it's $99 a month. And uh, I just made a suggestion to my wife that we need to change our system. So I'm going to do it. 
Yeah, now you live in a rural area, don't you? Well, it's 50,000 people in the town, but it's we live right on the outskirts of a farming community, yes. Right, so you, you don't really have other options, do you? No, no, we have Sparklight, uh, you know, Cable One, and uh, they guaranteed us 100. They delivered five to seven megabytes. <laughs> Um, and Sounds so like we, up, Sounds yeah, like <laughs> we upgraded our system and they said, we'll guarantee you a hundred and it's about 35 to 37 megabytes now. And so we're just going to get rid of the whole thing and go with, uh, but we were on a satellite, but the trees grew up around our house and blocked everything. So we couldn't, uh, we couldn't cut all the neighbor's trees down to get the satellite. So we had to go to cable one and now we're going to go to Sparklight. All right. Um, I wanted to, a couple of things I, wa I wanted to mention is there's some confusion in the video and I wish I hadn't put that thing about Doxus 3 in there because that that has caused a lot of uh, a lot of confusion. Um, and, and what that is all about is this is that if you have a fiber optic system and like Huey, my you know, my co-host on Tech for Senior, he has fiber optic in his house and he gets 150 down and 150 up. So that it equals, there's the download and the upload on fiber optic is fine, all right? So it's equal. And you think, well, why? So, but with the cable systems, why, why do we always have like 600 download and 20 up, right? Like, why can't we have 600 down and 600 up, right? And the reason for that is, is the software, which is called Doxus, and that's the software that they use to, commun that, to communicate through these cable systems. And it's the limitation of the software that makes it on a cable system, it makes it so that the, the, the upload is so much slower than the download. Because it's, it's, as I said to you, the cable systems are like in the Mesa, like in Mesa, Arizona, for example, Cox is, is the cable, big cable company, right? In fact, at Silveridge, they have fiber optic cable coming right into Silveridge. So it's all fiber optic. It's not coax, it's all fiber optic. So uh, it's, it's uh, you know, that's, that's really, cable companies really do have mostly fiber optics. So that's sort of, sort, of, sort of interesting. But I think that the point that I'm trying to make is in the video was this, is that we need to change our, I mean, I'm talking to the converted, right? You guys are all sort of techies and you're, you're interested in, in you, you see what we're doing. But, you know, there are a lot of people that say, nah, I, I, you know, I'm, I check my email once a month and that's about it. And, and, you know, they're really not interested. And those people are going to get left behind. I mean, it really is going to be a very lonely existence for, for people unless you adopt the, the transition into this new era that we're going into. And it's, things are going to change rapidly in the next year with new technologies. Zoom will be on all your televisions. Zoom will be universal on all your devices that you have in your house. Um, you'll walk into your house and just say, phone uh, Dewey Kloos and boom, Dewey will be there in, li in life, right? You know, <laughs> with Joanne, right? In life. So, so, uh, so it, it's, life is going to change rapidly. And so we need to be prepared. And it is so important that when you're looking at these different systems, for example, if you moved, the example I gave would be if you moved into a, you found your nice two bedroom condo downtown and you moved in and all of a sudden you found it was DSL and, and your upload speed in your two bedroom condo you just bought was maybe one or two megabits per second, which would mean that would be any, any communication systems you tried to use wouldn't work, right? So, or you move to an RV resort that had really crappy internet. Now, if you were in Phoenix or Mesa, you, you'd have the option of a hotspot or maybe 5G, right? So, so you'd have some options, but you have to be really careful on this because you really don't, you, you, if we're gonna move ahead in the next few years, you gotta secure a, a strong, reliable internet. So Question, that's it, Ron. Yeah. Question. <clears throat> Are you aware of situations where DSL comes off of a fiber optic cable? No, it wouldn't happen that way. You couldn't do it. You are no, wrong. I hate, I hate to sell. Well, I mean, you could have the fiber show. optic go to a DSL center and then the DSL center would broadcast it out. I well, can't. We, is anyone doing that? No, no. 
just listen for a moment. Back in Minnesota, I have CenturyLink DSL. It comes off of a fiber optic cable that runs down the street we live. And, and then there's some converter that is put, was put up on a pole and the, the technician came out for a day and, and set the whole thing up. I, I, I'm paying for 80 megabit uh, download. I'm getting typically 65, 70. But what's the upload? The upload is, I think it's 15 or 20 something like that. It's right. not super slow, but not equal. And there are two types of, of uh, you know, of internet as far as the, the upload and download speeds. There's synchronous, which means that the speed up and down are the same. And then there's asynchronous, which is the, where you have the very high download speed and the low upload speed. Yeah, but the real the real worry in something that's an 8015 or something like that, and I had that earlier this year, is that it isn't always 8015. And if it gets to be 65, 60, and then five upload, you have a lot of trouble doing communication, running Zoom and running stuff like that. It's really, so your upload speed needs to really be uh, be secure. But again, yeah. again, you have a, a reliable, you know, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I you, you could hook a DSL up to, I didn't think they did that anymore, but I mean, I guess it's possible. But really, um, you you know, there's a lot better options out there. That's really sort of old, old, old technology. Yeah. Ron. It is working here in Minnesota, I will tell you. Yeah. Back in Minnesota, I will tell you that. Yes, go ahead. Bob? What, what you also need to realize is that download speed being fast is great if you're watching movies. Right. Down, upload speed needs to be equally fast if you're doing Zoom presentations because right. it's not the download speed, it's the upload speed. That's right. When I do a presentation, I'm sending it out. So if my upload speed is down in a basement, there's going to be a lousy presentation. But most people don't realize that. Oh, I got great download speed. Well, it doesn't do any good if you're on the other end broadcasting. Now, the other thing that's interesting is, is that um, when the technician installed my gigabit connection, I mean, who would ever need a thousand megabit download? Like, that's insanely fast, right? Like, I mean, you got to have rocks in your head to be paying $10 more a month to, to I mean, you're just burning a $10 bill up. Why would you do that? So when I talked to the technician, I said, well, who's the other idiots that you have getting this thing set up? He said, oh, it's our standard, mo it's our standard modem we install now. This is the one we use for, um, for all our installs. And I said, why? And he said, well, because that's how we broadcast the TV in your house. I have the old system where the coax comes in, it goes to a box, there's a hard drive on it, and then it record, you know, then it goes up coax to all my different TVs, right? Well, with the new systems they have now, it's all streamed. It all comes in and each, t there's no hardwire in your house. They don't put any coax cable in your house anymore. It's all streamed to each TV, right? So it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not going, there's no physical connection on your TV because it's just streamed to the TV. And that's what they're using these new, um, the new routers for new modems with the higher speed. That's why they have them. So I would imagine Cox probably in, in Mesa has a gigabit connection that if you lived in a residential house, you could get that. So the other thing would be is to is to make sure that you, um, if you have an existing contract is to is to, to, to look at it, upgrade it, you know, talk to the people because the, the prices of these things change all the time. And you might get a, a, a really much better deal uh, than you have. So, so don't just accept the deal you have that you negotiated five years ago. You know, look at, look at other options for yourself. And for sure, 5G should be in, in most of your fixed base 5G should be in most, most areas now. And you should be talking to your uh, wireless providers. Unless you live out in the boonies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you may be a Starlink guy, Bob. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I do have Comcast cable, so. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that uh, Byron um, Byron uh, had in, he, Byron was so frustrated in Silver Age that he, he, he did do, he did the uh, satellite internet. And, you know, by and large, it worked sort of okay, 
but his big problem that and I was over and worked with him on this and uh, it was latency you know it every time you know it just it wasn't fast enough because it had to go all the way up now Starlink by and large has has resolved that issue so that they, their satellites are much they're on a lower orbit so the latency is really low so you don't really notice that Chris has his hand up Chris go ahead you're muted. Uh, as you, yeah, I got it. As you know, we think differently. And one of the options that I really think is going to come is uh, from the cell towers. Uh, that wasn't in your list of- uh, That's of fixed space 5G. Well, yeah, but okay. Um, it, for, for at least nine or 10 years, we've been doing all our internet uh, at here, when we're here for a year in, in Mesa because of the COVID, or even here for six months, it all comes off a hotspot on our cell phones. And though that uh, right now, uh, it's, it's a pretty good deal because it's 30 gigabytes on each side of our two cell, cell phones. So we have basically 60 gigabytes a month. And the average speed is anywhere, for, it varies, but it's anywhere from 20 to 40 down. And at the worst case, it's 10, but it's usually 15, 15 going up. Uh, I guess because we're cheap, the, to the two phones cost us $132 a month uh, for, the, for, for that. But that's changing all the time, and I'm going to make a suggestion. If you, if you think you want to think about uh, wireless, uh, you can call it mobile, but you could use it in your house too. The um, Mobile Internet the Resource Center uh, just produced a video uh, on, on, on various types of internet connections, and those are um the dog this time they are instead of based on uh, instead of being based on the provider they're based on the type of equipment that you want to use if you want to use a hotspot or you want to use a phone or or you want to use various other things and uh i think that's 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 changing a lot uh it, we don't we don't typically need more than more than 10 or so up but we haven't done any high resolution uh videos uh, going going up and so my question is when you're in, on these various systems as i understand it you do for example you can adjust the resolution of what's coming down so you 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 don't get you, you can get the decent picture it might not be as high a resolution but you can at least get one uh is is that is that possible now with with all these other systems you're talking about sure which that brings up a great topic and um Again, I think the whole under 100 megabit connection speed will be gone in the next couple of years. I think that it just isn't going to cut the mustard. Uh, if you're looking at Netflix and uh, Prime Video and all that sort of stuff, you have settings in your setup where you can, you can stream things a lot faster, of course, if you have a lot faster connection, and that gives you a much better picture. But, but 40 megabit download is what we had 10 years ago. And that's, that's, that's like driving a 10 year old car, you know, this is not going to cut it. And, and that's, that's what, what I'm saying is going to change. And as you, as we look at these new technologies coming online this next year, um, it is slow connections like that are just not going to cut it. And we don't have to worry about it because we have lots of options. That's all I'm saying is there are plenty of options. It's not going to be that much more money. It's just a change. It's just going to be a change. And uh, you are correct. I sent out uh, T-Mobile in the last newsletter for Silvercom CTC. I sent you the uh, the uh, T-Mobile new hotspot that they have for their fast connection. So, but the hotspots are for mobile use. You know, they're it's for it's for people who are traveling and they can move their hotspot around. If you're going to be in a single place like like you are, Chris, at Leisure World, a 5G um, um, fixed base connection to Verizon would be the way to go. And you'll get, you'll get really fast speeds, but it's not mobile. It's, it's, it's fixed. You know, you, it, it's just a fixed base on that. So by that's, the, that's really what you want. By the way, on a regular basis, I go into Verizon and I put my address in and ask if it's available and they keep saying, no, no, it is not. Right. Uh, no, 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 it is not here. And now the, the comment about driving old cars, my motorhome is 21 years old. One car is 15 <laughs> years old and the other one's 16 years old. So I wow. guess I fit right into that category, but the, uh, but, but the car, but the car has 60,000 miles on it. You know? <laughs> Byron, go ahead. 
So like Ron, you said 10 years ago, it was 40. In Silver Ridge, 10 years ago, it was one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big 10-4. And one down. That's why it was pretty frustrating 10 years ago. It is. By the way, it's Silver Ridge now. 56K. <laughs> By the way, at Silverage now, it's 19 or 20 down consistently and uh, four or five up consistently. And it's quite good once in a while in busy times. It'll slow just a bit for a moment, but that often happens even at home where I have 80 megabit down. But you know, the, uh, but the nice thing about that is, is that you'll have the option to, uh, you know, there are other options because it's in Mesa that you can use to, you don't have to use it. You can use something else, right? Uh, but if you lived in an RV park that was rural, and that was all you had, I wouldn't want to live there. No way. I mean, it just, it wouldn't meet my lifestyle. It, it, it is a factor, right? Okay. All right. Five, all five, right. Let's, let's move on. I want to do, we're now, um, I want to play another little video for you. This is on how to build a box to convert your 35 millimeter slides into digital pictures. Um, and then Mike's going to, Mike Falker is going to talk about his, uh, uh, an item you can put on the end of your camera, and Dewey's going to talk about his scanner. So I want to I want to get this video done. So you can have a look at this, and let me share my screen. Our memories are more like photos than videos. We remember moments, snapshots in time. Photos allow us to share these moments with others. Some may have been there with us, and photos give us a common anchor point. Some may not have been, separated by distance, time, or both, and photos allow us to share our experience with them. Imagine what it'd be like if you could move those memorable moments captured with physical images into the digital world. You could have a historical record that doesn't degrade over time. You could instantly share them with others around the world. You can compile them into new and different ways. Stick around and I'll show you how to move from imagination to reality. In this episode, I'm going to show an easy DIY build to help you digitize either slides or negatives. Its primary materials are some cardboard and an inexpensive light you can get at the home improvement store or online for less than $10. And you can use any camera, an SLR if you have one, or your phone, or anything in between. Welcome to the House of Hacks. If we're just meeting, I'm Harley, and I show you how to create stuff in the workshop. Sometimes it's out of wood or metal. Today, it's gonna be out of cardboard and duct tape. Basically, we're gonna make a light-filled box. This does two things for us. It diffuses the light nicely so we don't have any hot spots in our final image, and it gives us a place to mount either a slide or a negative. Whatever is mounted here gets lit up nicely, and then we can use any camera to make an image of it. I'll show some samples from my SLR and my phone later in the video. Let's get started. The tools we're going to need are a box knife, a straight edge, a right angle, a pen, and a measuring tape. The materials we're going to use are some scrap cardboard, both corrugated and non-corrugated, white duct tape, or you could use white paper or paint, shop lamp, daylight balanced LED light bulb, and glue. I'm going to be using this inexpensive shop lamp as a light source. They come in various sizes. This is one of the smaller ones with an eight and a half inch reflector. You can get them at any home improvement store or online. They'll take any kind of light bulb, but I'm going to be using an LED. These run cooler and have great color rendition. I recommend using daylight balance for the best color in your final images. And this one happens to be a 100 watt equivalent. Since the light's going to be bouncing around inside the box quite a bit, I wanted something with a higher wattage in order to be able to keep the ISO and the camera down lower. I'll leave Amazon affiliate links to all of this down in the description below. First, let's make a box to contain the light and give us a place to mount the slides or negatives. This needs to be large enough for the light to mount to, and also so there's enough room for the light to disperse nicely. Too small and you may end up with some shadows or gradients. I'm going to use an old cardboard box that we used for shipping. You could also use some foam board from the craft store and cut it to the desired size. First, I mark a circle where I want to put the light. Now 
I'm going to cut a hole in the cardboard above the reflector for the film mounting point. I have a number of different film sizes I work with, so I'm going to make this a bit larger than the largest negative I want to duplicate. In my case, it's 120 film, and making it a bit larger keeps the thick edges of the cardboard from casting shadows on the film. This gives me an idea for the size to cut the rest of the box to. I want the box to be about as deep as the light is round, so looking from the top, roughly square. The idea is to have the light shine in one direction, bounce off the back, and then into the film mounted on the same plane as the light. If we put the light on the opposite side of the film, so it's shining directly on it, we might get some hot spots or an unevenness of exposure from the middle of the film to the edges. Bouncing it this way should help eliminate that problem. So this box is a bit larger than I need. I'll use a box knife to cut it down to size. I don't want the inside of the box to be this brownish cardboard color, because that would give us a color cast of the light. I want it to be as close to neutral white as possible. I'm going to line the inside of this box with white duct tape. But you could also use white paint or glue white paper to the inside. We just need it to be white. And of course this step could be skipped if white foam board was used. Now that the box is white inside, I'm going to tape the box closed. The mother Next, I'll tape the light to the box. To do this, I'm going to first put down a layer of tape on the outside of the box. Then I'm going to tape the light to the tape on the box, making sure to fold over the end of the tape to give me a little pull tab. By taping to the tape on the box instead of the box itself, it'll be easy to remove the light without tearing up the box. We're almost ready to use this, but first we need an easy place to put the film. In addition to 35mm film cameras, I have a number of cameras that take 120 film and expose it at different aspect ratios. Some give me square images, and some give me wider images. I'm going to use this thin cardboard to make different holders for the various sizes so I can convert images from any of my cameras. For each type of film, I cut a large base piece that covers the hole in the box. These can all be the same size. Then each base gets a smaller hole for a particular film format. Finally, I make holders appropriate for each type of film to hold it in place. For slides, I cut some cardboard and glued it in a U-shape around the hole. Then I glued a small piece of cardboard on the corners to help hold the slide in place. This will allow the slides to be consistently placed in the same location. For film, I'll use cardboard folded to the correct size to make a sleeve and line it with fabric to minimize scratches. I can then run the film through this sleeve. Like the area around the opening for the light, I put more tape on the box around the hole where the film holders go and also on the film holders themselves. Then whatever film holder I need for the project at hand can be taped to the box and removed without tearing anything up. Now that we have the box constructed, let's put it to use and get it set up. I've got a nice stable setup here with the box on the table and the camera on a tripod. When you set this up, you want to make sure that your camera is straight on with the image that you're taking a picture of. If there's any angles involved in there at all, one side will be smaller than the other and you'll have distortion that you need to fix in post-processing. The way that I found easiest to set this up was to level the camera and then raise and lower the tripod until the images were centered between what I was taking the picture of and the camera. And then I could move the box in and out to change the zoom level until the image that completely fills the sensor. 
In my case, I have a 35 millimeter camera full frame and a true macro lens and 35 millimeter slides that I'm taking pictures of. So I can perfectly fill the image of the slide with the camera. If you have a different camera, a different lens, or a different film, then the aspect ratios may not perfectly line up and you'll end up with black bars on either the sides or top and bottom in order to, to see the entire image. If you're using a zoom lens in your setup, you want to set it to something over 100 millimeters, ideally. This will give you the least amount of distortion. If you go wider than that, then the edges may get distorted because of the lens optics. Now that we have the physical setup, we need to set up the settings inside the camera. There's two things we were concerned with, exposure and white balance. For exposure, we need to make sure the light's on, set the camera to manual mode, and look at just the white light coming out of the box. We want to set this so that our camera's histogram is as far to the right as possible without actually getting clipped off. I have a video that talks about this in more detail. This will give us the most amount of brightness in our images without blowing out any details. For white balance, we want to use the custom setting. How this is set up will vary from one camera to the next, so look in your user manual to find out how to set up yours. Now that everything is set up, I'm ready to put a slide in the holder and start making images. This box will work with any camera. I just showed it in SLR, but I've got my phone here and I can use it to just kind of position there and take an image. It'd be better if I had a tripod for my phone if I was doing a lot of these, but I don't and handheld works fine enough for demonstration purposes. I also found that digital zoom works, but having a clip-on macro lens works even better. These are inexpensive for cheap ones. They're not perfect lenses, but they're satisfactory. As I mentioned, different cameras, different lenses, and different films will give you different aspect ratios that may require some post-processing. Slides, of course, don't require post-processing for color correction, but you may need to adjust for crop. Negatives will need some color correction. Uh, obviously, you need to invert the colors. And I go into a lot of details about different camera lenses and the effects that they have, and also how to post-process negatives in this video over here. I'll see you over there. Down here is a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. And when making things, remember, perfection's not required, fun is. All right. Um, I should say that in, when I did mine, and I did a bunch of mine about a year ago, um, I just projected it. I still have a projector and I still have a screen. So I projected mine uh, onto the screen and just took pictures of it with my, with my phone. And the, and the pictures worked out great. I mean, I had no trouble with it at all. In fact, I sent, I, I had to go down and do a eulogy in Victoria and uh, uh, I, it was fairly quick. I had to get it done. And so basically I, uh, I took the slides, projected them, took pictures of the slides and then sent them over to Costco to get printed. And then the, they printed eight by tens off them and they were great and it worked out just fine. So you can do it in different ways. Now, where's Mike? Is Mike Folker there? Mike, do you want to tell us, you were telling us earlier about a little device that you have on the end of the lens that you can slide the pictures in. Can you explain that? Just, just clip the space bar there. You should unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's an actual lens that on the end, on the end of the lens is a a uh, little box where you just slide your slide in. Huh. And then you take a picture of it. And you, when you put the slide, the next slide in, it knocks the old slide out. So you can just keep going back and forth, putting the slide in, take a picture, put another slide in, take a picture. It's very quick. You have to have your camera set up so there's the light behind it, because the light shines through the, the uh, slide then. It's very quick, um, and it, it does a very good job. Mike, is that specific to the, the lens? The only problem you screen? have is the... Sorry, is... No, is you don't put it on your lens. You put it right onto your camera. Right. So what you I'm saying is... Oh, it, you, it, you take, take the lens, lens off. off of your camera, and you put this lens on. Oh, right. I see. Mm -hmm. So is that specific to a Canon right. or are they generic or do you, can you get them for all cameras? Well, there was one for Canon, but I got an adapter to put it to my Sony, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much? 
Yeah, it works great. How much? Uh, I don't know. I got it years ago. I forget what I forget what it was. Okay. I don't even know if they make them anymore, but I forget how much it was. Interesting. Uh, just a minute, Chris. Dewey, do you want to tell us about your scanner, like how you did it? Unmute yourself. Yes, I can. I've got a, are you seeing this here? Or will this be on the screen? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, got it. Wait, wait a minute, I guess I have to move my own image over to see what it looks like. Okay, this it. is a device that goes with my uh, Epson 4490 photo scanner. You lay this on the bed of the scanner and there, there are four slots for slides. So you can do four at once, take them off and do the next four. And I'll tell you the results are, it, it's exceptional. It's, Pretty close to the memory. You have to have a high resolution scanner if you want good photos. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this picture at all, but this is a photo in a family history I wrote that came off of a slide taken in the 1950s. So, okay. Yes, and the thing about that software that you, I've got the same scanner. And the, uh, the thing about that software is you can take a black and white negative, a negative, not a slide, but a negative, and create a positive picture. The, the software creates a positive, a positive picture, right? You are correct. Yeah, that, that's incredible. My mother had a whole box of negatives that like they were really early on in our life. I've never seen the pictures. I have no idea where the pictures went, but it was incredible because because you could put the slides in, they were 120 slides. Sure. Put those negatives, black and white negatives, you put them into the scanner and then it created like a picture. It wasn't a negative, it was a picture, right? Right. Yep. Pretty cool. Uh, sure. Chris Kuzinski, you want to talk about Wolverine? Sure. <laughs> um, a number of years ago, we had thousands of slides to do and we didn't want to mess around with three at a time. We actually, we started with a scanner and a, and a, and a, a, a grid, something like a, what, the, what Dewey had, and then you had to unload the slides, et cetera. And it did, a, it did a really good job, but it just took forever because you had to wait for the scanner. So we bought this, this Wolverine product for, it was like a hundred bucks. And it looks like this. Now, what you do is you, you put the, wait a minute, so you can see it. You put this in the, you just, stick, as fast as you can stick them in, takes about one second and it does tw 20 megapixel uh, images, uh, up to 20 megapixel picture images on, a, on an SD card you put in the back. But you also can play, plug it into your computer and connect them that way. We okay? Uh, you can connect them that way and that way you can put the, put, put the, uh, uh, Name the people, and so some of the times the slides have have um, information on them. Uh, so this is this this you can do it with this, uh, or you can do it with with actual film. There's little attachments that you can run the run the film in. And I would say Edith used to sit there doing the we're watching TV or something as fast as she could go. She was putting them in, and and so I would. It's sort of like Ron's thing about uh, 150 pictures in 13 minutes or something or other. That's the way that the way he did it. Now there's also a product uh, which we have. It's a basically it looks like a little copy machine, and it's got a platen on it. And this is for film or for excuse me for pictures. Uh, and uh, you you do it runs the same way with an SD, SD card. This is a little more money. It's about 150 bucks. But we don't use this anymore. What, when we have pictures to do, we do it with the with the uh, Google Photos uh, photo scan, and like Ron did uh, in the in 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 the uh, so, so in the slides, you know, or not slides in the uh, in the albums. So uh, so that's the way we do it. I can't say enough good things about this. We must have we must have put thousands of, of slides through here, and the pictures come out absolutely perfect. And besides that, if you want to take take the time, you can on this little device you can crop, lighten, darken it right here on this little screen that's on it. So uh, anyway, it's from Wolverine. Uh, we probably got it. Oh, I don't know. Five, eight, 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 six, ten. eight, ten years ago, but I think it's still available. So if you want production and you just want to get them done and you don't want to blow them up, fix them in Photoshop and everything, this is the way to go. So Chris, they've upgraded the they've upgraded a little bit since you bought it. Um, this is the um, this is the hundred and forty nine dollars, and it's now got a screen on it, and it's a little more fancy. 
Yeah, but the, the, the important thing about this thing is if you want to get slides done and you want to get them done in a hurry, you just chuck them through this thing and there's a one second a piece. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. As fast as you can go. Like, if anyone interested, it's $149 and that's at US and on Amazon. Um, yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Um, yes, for sure. Uh, one of the clubs, it's a thought that we should have for our club because one of the clubs uh venture venture out uh, bought a bunch of these and they lend them out to people who want to do bring their slides and do it you know because i mean who once you get them all done you don't need it anymore right so maybe that's something we should think about at our club have a couple of these sitting and people can borrow them and bring their slides down when they come and just convert them all so uh, seven, yeah. seven years ago we had about hundreds and hundreds of slides. I just sent them all to Costco and got a nice DVD back with all of the ones. <laughs> so I didn't have to do too much work. Yeah, we were talking, now, so, now where did we, I was talking about that at a conference just recently and someone said that Costco was discontinuing that service. I, know, I don't remember, was it Bob, yeah. was it you that said that? I can't remember. I, I know that they they just announced that down here that all the photo services would be would be would be disconnected uh, discontinued by Costco. Would uh, be for yeah. slides conversion slide conversion. The, the, the advantage to this is that you can annotate the slides. Now what Edith did is we had a hundred year old uh, relative that had boxes of slides and with all the, all the relatives on it. it. And what Edith did is she. Put them through, and and the the gal next, the hundred year old person sat next to her, and she told them little stories about it. And Edith was typing them in the computer at the same time. And when the, what the, the their her kids are like sixty and seventy years old, but it was that it was the greatest gift they ever got because Edith put them all on a on a CD, and that was their Christmas present. It was just fabulous. So now, if you had to do it all again, and you now here's the question for you. If you had to do it all again and you watched Tech for Senior yesterday, how would you do it now? I don't remember what, what, what I don't remember. You, you don't remember Tech for Senior yesterday? Yeah, well, I, I know I, I watched it. <laughs> so the, the, whole, the whole point about the program yesterday was live streaming, right? So what you could do is you could, you could actually use StreamYard and you could take your phone and simply as you were putting the slides through you could have the person talking in your phone that would live stream and it's <coughs> it's going to save the live stream onto and you could you could yeah you could even digitally connect the live stream to your pictures so lots of Absolutely. things you could do stream stream art i'm i'm, I'm going to get into stream art because that's the, that, that's, the, that's the future man <laughs> it is it is it's it's crazy good and it's free <laughs> So if, if you did not see Tech for Senior yesterday, you got to watch that show. For sure, it was uh, all about streaming. So yeah, anybody? So listen. Um, I got what I watched. Anybody uh, else? Digital slides to pictures or anything? Anybody want to talk about uh, any suggestions or comments? Or I I actually just took that. Um, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. The Costco, the Costco is going to be closing in the store. You're still going to be able to mail stuff to them, and they'll mail it back to you. Really? Are they Just closing in all the their store? Is going to be closed. Really? They're closing all the um... five hundred in store. Really? Photo, photo. the photo. Yeah, five hundred stores, five hundred plus stores. Wow. They're closing all the uh, photo, but now, they I aren't wonder... closing them completely. You're going to be able to send it online, and then they'll email it, email, mail it back to you. Then, now, if you want all... pictures, right. you send you... them, and then they'll mail them back to you. Okay. Now you so all who's going to be all... doing it? Then I don't know. Right. Well, now you should all be aware. Now, now I did a video on this just recently. No, I haven't, because you haven't seen the video yet. It's going to be my APCUG presentation. <laughs> so I shouldn't be talking to you about this. But you all know that in Google Photos, and maybe this is the reason they're closing their services, 
what you all know is that in Google Photos now, you can print directly to CVS, Walgreens, or Walmart, okay? This is directly from Google Photos. In other words, last year when I was driving along and we, I, saw, I had a bunch of pictures I wanted to print off, I pulled into a CVS parking lot, I chose the five pictures I wanted, I hit print, shows that particular location, and then by the time I got out of the car and walked into CVS, the girl at the back that was, the machine was running and she said, yep, your pictures will be ready in a couple of minutes, boom, and I was out of there within like seven minutes, right, and I had my pictures. So this is a, this is a service available on all CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. So you, uh, that maybe, maybe that's Chris, that's the business. reason Costco is discontinuing it because maybe they can't, you know, it's, it, it's so, I mean, you know, in Mesa, come on, you guys, every corner either has a CVS, a Walgreens or a Walmart. I don't know where they get all those pharmacists from. It's crazy, but they've got, they've got a, they've got those on every corner, right? So I think I think they're just continuing right. the cost of maintenance of the of the equipment. It's it's huge on anything like that. Yeah, particularly they had a commercial like a lot of professional photographers use the Costco one. I mean, they they had a whole professional services uh, where you could right. sit in and do color balancing of your picture. A lot, you know, really in a lot better detail. Anyway, uh, really, that's very interesting. I didn't know that. Hmm. Too bad. Anyway, uh, it's hey, it's ten o'clock. Add that to your uh, video. Pardon me. <laughs> yes. I said you'll have to add that to your next video. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's a yes. I'll have to do that. So I'll have to change that for my uh, for my presentation. All right, uh, Carol, do you have any uh, final comments or blessings or what? What you did you want to say anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right um well i'd like to thank everyone for coming today uh we'll uh we will uh, see you uh in another uh i guess our next meeting will be and will be the uh it will be the first tuesday in uh, february uh and the second second the third Tuesday in February, we have a special guest coming to do a talk. Bob, would you know who that might be? No, I'm still trying to find out, but you're not sending me enough information. <laughs> <laughs> someone's going to talk on. Someone's going to talk on security. Some from Mars. Yeah, someone's going to talk on security. Uh, yeah. On what? On security. Oh. So that's so that's 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 coming on security. OK, on security, yes. And then also Tell them to run that video I sent you. <laughs> yeah, well, I well, I sent it to Bob. The other one is um, I'm working now with the Mesa Library. As you know, Kim Belair passed away and um, they sent out a notice saying that they, there's another person doing virtual meetings. And so I've uh, submitted a <laughs> Uh, possibly uh, have a ch have her do a presentation for us on library services in Mesa, which I think would be a good thing. Um, however, we are running out of time because we will be finished pretty soon and everyone's going to be back home, right? <laughs> so March is coming quickly, only two months. I know. Right? Yeah. Virtually, Take you can care, keep everyone. this thing going. Have Ron. a great week. Yes, Richard. Yes. Anyway, we will see everyone. Uh, this will be online later today, as, as you know, and we will see everybody at the next meeting. And don't forget, Tech for Senior on Monday. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.